everybody, Levi Clay here, and we've made it, guys. This is the final part. This is part four in nailing the melodic minor thing. Now, um, <laughs> I'm going to pretend. I'm going to play make believe now. Um, I've had lots of questions <laughs> with people talking about the melodic minor scale and saying, uh, "But Levi, aren't you supposed to play the melodic? I heard that you play the melodic minor scale one way when you're playing it up, and then another way when you're playing it down." You see, the problem with that as an approach, when someone tells you that, what that generally says to me is that they've read a lot about music, but they've never heard any, and they've certainly never learned any. Playing the melodic minor scale as a, a kind of what you'd call classical melodic minor is not common anymore. The reason you used to do that, the reason people used to do that, is because if you think in terms of intervals, when you play the melodic minor scale from the bottom, one, what does that tell you? Nothing. Two, what does that tell you? Nothing. Flat three. Oh, okay, this is minor. When you do the same from the top and you descend, root, what does this tell me? Nothing. Seventh. Oh, okay, is this major? Six. Well, this sounds like major. Five. Oh, okay, this is the major scale. Four. Oh, okay, this is the major scale. Definitely the major scale. Flat three. Oh, okay, it's not. The point is, when you play a melodic minor scale from the bottom, it sounds minor very quickly. When you play it from the top, it takes quite a while for you to really hear that it's minor. And because of that, from a melodic voice leading perspective, if you want a minor sound, it makes a lot of sense if you're playing from the top that you, um, you know, you play a sound that sounds minor. So in classical music, or yeah, kind of bark counterpoint type stuff and chorales and things, what you're going to find is you'll play melodic minor ascending and natural minor descending. But we don't do that in, in music anymore because, believe it or not, music is more than just playing scales up and down. The first thing that I thought when someone um, presented this as an idea when I was studying music in, in college many, many years ago was, you know, what if I'm not just playing a scale? What if I'm playing a run of intervals? I'm jumping up and down and, you know, going all over the place, playing things like... Uh, what if I play... Yes, yeah, not well, it's, well, it's some pretty ropey stuff in there, right? But um, that's not particularly scalar, and you don't want to go. Oh well, you've ascended to that interval, therefore you should play uh, melodic minor and make it the sixth. But now you've actually descended, so this note shouldn't be the sixth. ridiculous, right? So some people will refer to this as fixed melodic minor, where you stay the same up and down. Some people will refer to it as jazz minor. I don't really mind <laughs> which way you think of it. Uh, it's a sound that we're playing and it will be the same both up and down. Now, onto the really tricky stuff. Because, you know, I threw some shade there. You know, this is music theory for guitar right here. We're talking music theory for guitar, right? I'm giving you music theory on the guitar. But the important part of music theory for guitar is music, right? Music is very important. Context is very important. So as I said, almost all the contexts in which we're gonna be playing this melodic minor scale is going to be a Dorian context. So if you just take a vamp like D minor seven to G seven, a bit of volume would help. That's a classic Dorian um, vamp, if you like, and Dorian works over it. trying to be Wayne Grants and failing miserably, right? <laughs> and Dorian is going to work on that. The important thing is, yeah, so will melodic minor. So I'm going to teach you now the first ever lick that I was taught that made me understand, ah, I see how these things are often blended together. So the lick, I should have prepared this, right? The lick sounds like this. If we look at that, this is me thinking Dorian. I'm 
starting 10 on the high E and coming down Dorian 10 uh, on the high E and then 13, 12, uh, 10 on B. So just descending the scale. Then we're going to come 12, 10, 9 on the G. That's the first part, it's just a descending scale. Then we have this. Now what is that? Well, I'm playing 9 on the uh, G string, 12 on the D, pulling off to 11. That's my natural 7, that's my melodic minor note. And then I repeat. And on that time I play the flat 7, so 9 on the G, 12, 11 on the D. Repeat, 9 on the G, 12, 10, 9 on the D. Hit 12 on the A, and we can end on that. and play music, right? <laughs> um, cool, so there's our lick. Sounds cool. Uh, I'm going to give you another one. So another thing that I love to do is I will start thinking minor. Check on still in June. Brand new strings. <laughs> Now if I'm in that shape 1, I'll play, so that's uh, 10 and 12 on the G and D, and then we just take that, that double stop and move it down a fret, and that gives us 9 and 11 on the G and B. So that'll be our flat 3rd and our root, and then when you move that down you've got the 2nd and the major 7. can continue from that. So we'll play Sometimes, guys, <laughs> looking for magic. I'm thinking I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear something and play it, and then go, "Wow, that was that was incredible." I've documented it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So the basic idea, and then we go back to our root note, and we'll continue up the scale, Dorian scale, from that point. So I'm really big on that, playing that second, the root, and then sorry, the second, the seventh. And the root. Or sometimes I'll play bounce off that second. Play that all the time. Play the root note, slide down to the seventh, play the ninth or the uh, well, yeah, ninth fret, and then end on the root. So when it comes to uh, melodic minor vocabulary, you really, 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 really need these fingerings down because just simple uh, melodic embellishment around these positions is gonna be enough to add to your Dorian phrases and get some stuff that sounds really cool. A phrase I absolutely love is I'll go up to the third and then I'll roll chromatically down to the seventh. 
just playing, you know, typical minor blues. <laughs> You do the same there. Oh, whoops. From the third. So uh, the best thing you can possibly do with this stuff is start extracting arpeggios. Arpeggios, arpeggios, arpeggios. And what you find is that you can play diatonic arpeggios. So I could play minor major nine arpeggios like this. Or... They sound cool, but really... When I think arpeggios now, I'm thinking these kind of hybrid, more more, more vertical things that maybe aren't necessarily so strict in terms of their intervallic structure. I like to take each one of these patterns and find a vertical approach through it. So one or two notes on each string. And what I love in this position is... I'm playing 12 on the high E, 9, and I come down 10, 10. That's like an augmented. You'll find all of those augmented arpeggios, subject for another day. Point is, yeah. That's the first part of our arpeggio. Then I'll play 9, 12, 11, 12 on the A, and then uh, 8 on the A, and maybe I'll slide down to 5. Ascending sounds great too. I have just about enough frets to get away with that. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't. 21 frets because Telecaster. Oh, my guitars, right? Oh, there we go. So, Melodic Minor, it's been four lessons and hopefully you've got a lot out of these. It's not a quick thing, you're not going to get it like that. This is something you're really going to have to practice, spend a lot of time really getting to grips with each one of these positions. Milk each position for melodic content, then practice the ability of moving between one position to another, then start applying some of these musical ideas in those Dorian contexts. Anytime I can do this... <laughs> stuff <laughs> anytime I can play Dorian I can always add in this melodic minor flavor and it's going to add a lot of twists and turns to your melodic contours and ideas so lastly last time I promise guys <laughs> I'm gonna hit this button and say thank you very much to my supporters over on patreon I can take this guitar off now I've had it over my shoulder for a long time um, these guys keep bringing you these videos so I don't know why I'm waving my telecaster around pointing at people 
uh, yeah thank you so much um, guys for your support it really does mean a lot uh, and hopefully you all got something out of this series of lessons um, while I'm away of course I am obviously answering comments and questions and all that stuff so you know uh, don't feel isolated <laughs> if you would like to be like those people check me out by clicking this button up here a lot up here you can support me for as little as a dollar which is awesome you if you don't want to do that click this button ah, blah, blah. too much talking to subscribe and two more of my videos here and here forgive me it's like two o'clock in the morning <laughs> thank you so much for all the support guys hit that like button uh, hit that share button subscribe hit me up in the comment section below and i will see you for another video again soon